Welcome to today's episode. What I'm going to be doing today is heading to the end and getting as many shocker boxes as possible. And besides that, I have a ton of other projects that I plan on doing today. So the reason I want some shocker boxes for today is because I want to be able to fill my entire ender chest with just shocker boxes because I would like to transport things a lot more easily. Right now, I have stuff filled with golden carrots, stuff with extra armor, and I think also this one is filled with firework rockets. So I only have one empty shocker box right now, and I would like a lot more because it would make it a lot easier to basically move things around for farms and also when you go out and do something you can just fill up a ton of shocker boxes which I cannot do right now before I do that what I would like to do is fix my nether portal so I kind of placed this down quite a while ago and I built a slime farm you can see this is what the slime farm looks like right now it goes up there into there and then it goes into a hopper I wanted to do something more elaborate but it was a bit hard because the slime balls kept getting stuck in weird spots so it was just easier to put it into a hopper so you can see it's kind of producing some slime balls but not a lot but anyways what i was talking about before i got distracted was that i want to move this nether portal and create something around it that kind of fits this theme so what i was thinking was basically creating my main nether portal as a ruined portal so these are basically nether portals that are broken. So I'll use the same kind of idea. Instead of stone, I want to use blackstone because blackstone is used in the nether. And I can basically incorporate these ideas, maybe some cry obsidian and also an iron bars into the nether portal. I also don't think I've checked if I've taken this stuff out of here. So let's steal as much as I can from this ruined portal. Well, that's weird. I was flying back and apparently my horse is on top of my the mountain here. So let's get this guy back to my base. This is going to be tricky. Hopefully he won't fall. Well, I got this guy back to my base. Now his health is really low. So if I remember correctly, it is sugar that heals horses. Let's double check though. Yep, it definitely does. So that is good. So got him attached back to his fence post. He better not leave. I don't want to track him down again. Come on, checkers. Don't leave. So where, oh, where do I want to put the ruined portal? I think next to the slime farm would be the logical spot, although that's prime real estate for something down the road. Maybe, yeah, maybe right here would be a better spot. Let's just start by simply putting some netherrack down. So the other thing I want to do is incorporate some crimson allium. So let's put this on here and turn some of the blocks around it and that's what I wanted okay cool so let's turn this into that which kind of caused me some damage so it's a bit funky but that pretty much is what I wanted to do and here is the finished result so unfortunately I had to take a bit of break to look at ruined portals just to copy them and see how they're usually built so you can see all the black stone there's the gold in the middle basically have some nice symmetry there and I couldn't incorporate crying obsidian because you can't make another portal with crying obsidian so there is the tree and there is some mix of magma blocks I tried to incorporate it a bit and I put some crimson nylium with some nether sprouts so I think that looks pretty good it kind of fits the overall terrain and stands out a bit and it works as my main nether portal so obviously I have to light it up. I won't go through it yet because it'll probably create a new portal. Okay, let's see if I got my math right and got it in the right spot. Cool, perfectly worked out. And now that that is done, now I can get rid of this portal. So the next thing I want to do is work on this thing. So now that I have removed the nether portal, I can look at the slime farm, or at least the output of the slime farm. And this thing does not look pretty at all. My block choices for the block palette are not good for this thing. They're kind of all over the place. The shape is very flat. The sh uh, it's a little too tall, I think. And I kind of worked on this off screen because I was it was kind of a work in progress. I mean, the inside's okay-ish with the quartz. And I think this idea with the slime balls is kind of cool. But I think I could uh, kind of improve this a lot more than what I've done. So I think what I'm going to do is work on this next and what I'm going to do is kind of move this down a bit 
maybe move the chest over here so that they shoot from there into the chest and I can make this building a lot smaller and add some depth and maybe improve the block palette on the outside a bit. So the first thing I did was grab some chests. I think I don't need four double chests for this because this slime farm is very slow. You can see there's only two stacks already. So the next thing is placing the hoppers. So there we go, there's the first step. So I basically lowered this and I moved over the quartz over here. So now the slime balls will go in there. So this will allow me to get rid of all of this area and also move down the roof a bit. I mean, it'll still be kind of a box, but at least I can add some detail to it. Okay, so everything is complete. I kind of minimized it down to the most basic patterns. And I kind of want to try to do the same thing I did with the villager trading hall. So basically right now it is just a giant orange terracotta cube. So first thing I want to do is put a path in. Okay, so that is done. And the next thing I want to do is something for the entrance. So what I was thinking was kind of an awning. So basically you can use string like this. Then we will take this carpet and let's see how this looks. So white and then red, then another more white. And then we throw some fence posts and let's see how this looks. That sort of works, but it still needs a bit of work. The next thing I was thinking of was adding a planter here. So just using trap doors on the sides and then coarse dirt in the middle. Then let's just throw some different flowers in here like that. Probably add some more. Let's see how that looks. Sort of is okay. Still needs some texture on the building though. And the sign farm is completed. So I tried to play some blocks and talk at the same time, but apparently that's really hard. So I looked online for some ideas for this because I was kind of just wasting time basically. So it's a lot of spruce and with the terracotta, I also have the carpet to create an awning with the uh, spruce fence posts. So I think this gives a nice entrance to the slime farm. I also added some planters on the sides with some flowers, coarse dirt so it won't turn into grass. And I also have oak trapdoor, no that's birch trapdoors for the windows. And I put buttons just to create some depth. And you can see the trapdoors around the windows, some slabs and trapdoors in between. And the fence posts to create a little bit of depth. Some oak leaves if I want to, you know, add a little bit here. I don't want to do too much though. Oh yeah, I can't place it there because of the trapdoor. But I think that works, sort of. Yeah, that works. So I'll just place some around here just to add a little bit. I also have some bone meal. I guess that adds a bit to the area. It's not so um, barren. So that looks good with some leaves and some foliage around the sides. So let's get on to the next task. So the next thing I got to do is work on this. So I apparently have been using my silk touch tools a lot. So I need to restore the durability, which is pretty easy because I have been building around here. So I have lots of melon slices and pumpkins to trade to the villagers. So hopefully I can get a ton of XP. I'm already at 67 levels. How did that happen so quickly? So let's take these up to the villager trading hall. Actually, another thing I need to do is put some string up on the roof here because it seems like well it only seems to be those levels up there but there seems to be snow layers accumulating because i'm in a colder biome cluster where it can snow i also have an idea for some windows on here but let's do the villager trading first and the other thing is apparently my elytra is also pretty low so this is definitely a good thing to do right now let's see how quickly i can do this just trading with the villagers while they make so much noise. They are so annoying sounding. Let's see how much of that, almost my elytra has been restored. So if you want to know how insane exactly villager trading is to get XP, I've only done one round with my nine farmer villagers. I restored my entire elytra and all my tools and I still have this much pumpkin and melons. So I'm going to have a ton of it 
uh, enchantment levels when I'm done this. So done with the villager trading and here is all the emeralds that I'll probably waste on getting quartz blocks from the stonemasons and you can see I am at level 73. So I was able to get six levels out of that. Since it's raining, I thought I'd show you something a bit weird that I noticed, which was this just random patches of snow around the villager trading hall. So I think this is because it's a stony shore and then the random pockets are planes, as you can see on the side there. So I guess that's what happens when you build in biomes that have different temperatures to them. So stony shores probably have a bit of snow when it's higher up than the plains biome. The next thing I want to do is work on this brewing house. Yeah, it's a house, I guess. Kind of has a weird castle thing going on. But I don't really like this look to it. The sandstone is kind of odd. So what I want to do is take what I did with the slime farm and try to duplicate it on this one, but with a different color terracotta, maybe different colored wood. I think maybe something like pink and birch might be a good idea for this. And also it is pretty cramped in here. There's no windows. So I want to see how this works out. I think I can still keep this sort of idea on the inside, but just change the exterior of the build. So this is it before, and there is the finished result of the brewing apparatus structure. So you can see I basically did the same thing, but with pink and birch. So it looks pretty good, I think, especially the overgrown look on the sides. Did some oak too, and I pretty much kept the exact same inside, although I added some polished basalt blocks, basalt, basalt blocks, and then changed up the roof a bit and added some nether brick in between so I think this looks pretty good obviously there is the birch trap doors that I'm using as windows water for the brewing and then some more plants so I think this looks pretty good obviously got to have the pressure plates so I can walk in and out because this string stuff is kind of weird if I had to open the door it would probably break the string why does that keep happening? Oh, I get it. That's powered. So it's basically moving the trapdoor at the same time. I guess I'll have to move that out of the way eventually. So on to the next thing. So I think the next thing is just to get rid of all of this nether warts. I think this is more than I'll ever need for potions because I do not brew a lot of potions. I might need some eventually if I ever... Um, I don't know, do something like a guardian farm probably. So I should mention that I'm not gonna do this exact same style for every single building. I think that would be kind of boring after a while, but I think this is a good base to work off of. I can add more levels, maybe try some different blocks, uh, just have some different styles that I can incorporate into this. So definitely my building is something I really need to work on. Uh, I find that it's a bit hard to come up with ideas on the spot. So I like to kind of look around and get some ideas and try to incorporate them and as I include them, maybe my building will get a little bit better. So the next thing is harvesting all of these crops. So usually I do this off screen, but I thought I'd show you how often I do it as I did it the last episode and I usually do it when I need emeralds, although now I don't really need emeralds with the villager trading hall. So it's a good idea just to have extra for, I don't know, villager breeders and also if I ever really need emeralds from the villager trading hall. And here's a full shocker box of potatoes, carrots, and wheat. That I can stow away for a rainy day and it rains a lot in this biome for when I need emeralds. So let's just throw all of these wheat seeds in here and get some more bone meal. So the last thing I want to do before I go for my end bust is to check on my firework rockets because I plan on being in the end for quite a while so I'm going to need a lot. So this is quite a bit. It is probably more than enough than I need but I think it would be a good idea to just stock up and get even more firework rockets. Might as well check the sugarcane to see how much paper it'll produce and that is quite a bit. That's probably more than I need. So now I'll just head over to my creeper farm and AFK and get as much gunpowder as possible. Done AFKing, so let's check how much I got. So it looks like I almost have a full 
double chest of just gunpowder so that is going to get me a ton of firework rockets and we'll grab all the sugarcane yoink and then we'll craft some firework rockets of course with flight duration three so they have a little more oomph to them and it's all crafted so i have a full shocker box of firework rockets but wait i have even more firework rockets and wait and i have even more gunpowder so i kind of went a little overboard with the gunpowder and the firework rockets but i mean i can now really waste them if i want to so let's head into the end and do some end busting so it's been a while since i've been in here but since i have 83 levels I thought it might be a good idea to use them before I go into the end because I'll probably lose them if I die. And I guess an enderman was in here that blocked, put down a, a dirt block. So let's grab some lapis and let's throw it in there. And I have tons of books from the villager trading. So let's see what I get. So I'm, I don't really care what I'm getting. I'm just trying to get as many enchantments as possible. Just use up the experience. Okay, there, so I have enchanted a ton of books. Some of them have crossbow enchantments, which I do not have set up in my village trading hall. And some of them have fishing enchantments, which I probably will never use. But there, I got all the enchantment levels. Now let's head to the stronghold and the end. Okay, so I tried to minimize my inventory as much as possible. So I have my sword. A golden I should actually get extras of some stuff but this is basically the idea I have a sword some golden carrots firework rockets just a pickaxe in case some blocks if I need them ender pearls a water bucket and I'm gonna try a bow just out of curiosity with the uh, shulkers so I think that pretty much covers everything there's a high chance I'm gonna die from this so definitely have to set my spawn point here so I can go back into the end and uh yeah let's go and yeah, let's see if i remember how to do this and let's crawl in so the goal for this is going to be to get an entire ender chest worth of shocker boxes so i'm gonna have to uh search out where an end city is i mean i probably hit all the ones that are pretty close but let's check out this one and see if there are any shulkers to kill so there's that guy. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it dropped a shocker shell. And while I was preparing for this, I looked it up and it is about an 18% difference with looting. So if I use the bow, it's only going to be 50%. But if I use the looting three sword, it is going to be 68.75% or something like that. Uh, I do not see any other shocker boxes here so i think this one's pretty cleared out
so I almost am done. Almost, so close. Only need four more shocker shells. Which should be pretty easy. I'm really feeling it right now. I mean, things have been going well. And I'm probably jinxing myself by saying that. Eeny, meeny. Oh, I can see one there. Mo. Let's go with Eeny. Oh. Forgot that. I completely forgot that that can happen if you throw ender pearls. And there we go. Down another one. So I just need two more. Let's see if I can get the final two. Of course that would happen. There's one. And I just need one more. There we go. That's the last one right there. And while I levitate here, I will enjoy the moment. Where was it? There it is. Okay, let's check. So I don't want to get all the way back to my base and make and see that I don't have enough shocker shells. So I think that is the final two. Looks pretty good. So I don't see any point in wasting my time around here. That was very successful. I didn't die once. And I definitely learned a lot because now I know that bows are very useful for dealing with a huge room of the shulkers. So now I just got to figure out where a gateway would be. Did I check that on the way here? I don't know. Might as well check though. Looks like it's been raided already though. Yep. Raj has been here. Definitely. Nope. I definitely not been here. Cool. And let's grab another shocker for the road. Okay, so now let's just search for an end gateway. End gateway. End gateway. And head back to my base. Should I grab another uh, Alitra while I'm here? It's like potato chips. You just can't have one. Have I? I don't. It doesn't look like I've been here before. And the reason I keep saying that is because I see shulkers, and I definitely would. No, I've definitely been here before. So that's a lie. Apparently, I don't always kill shulkers when I am on in the end ship. It's a thing about the end. It's really disorienting if you don't know where you are or you don't see any islands. Because you have nothing to reference it to. But I am heading towards 0, zero so eventually... I should see the main end island where I can hit the exit portal. There it is. So let's see if I can hit the right spot and get in right in there. And boom. So gonna head to my home base and apparently I have a, a llama that greets me to my base. So to show off all the loot I got from all that end busting, there's a full ender chest of shocker boxes. I have two pairs of Elytra in here, stuff like iron, armor, more shocker shells, and a lot of random stuff, and even more armor diamonds, gold ingots, and iron ingots. So it was definitely a good haul. I didn't get a ton of loot, but I definitely got the goal of getting enough shocker boxes so I think that is enough for today's episode. That was definitely a lot of building and other stuff, not to mention the end. So the next episode is going to be this. And I kind of uh, been holding it off because I know it's going to be a lot of work, but I think it's time to do it. And that is to build my storage system in the next episode, which is going to be gigantic. So thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for that episode.